Salutations dear viewers, um, this is George from Ireland and in this um, video I bid a lugubrious Ave at Kowale to Morgan Tsvangarai. Um, some of you may know that Mr Tsvangarai was the leader of the Movement for Democratic Change in Zimbabwe for around 20 years. He was Prime Minister of Zimbabwe for several years. So um, it is dolorous to recall that Mr. Tsvangarai has been called to his reward. Um, so he eventually succumbed to cancer, from which he'd been suffering <clears throat> for a few years. Well, so look back at his record of 65 years and um, what is achieved. And unfortunately, it's not half of what it ought to have been. So he was born in um, Zimbabwe when it was southern Rhodesia, and he grew up during a time of great turmoil. There was upheaval as the country transitioned to the white immigrant rule and to eventually black majority rule in 1980. So he was involved in ZANU-PF in the early 80s, which was the governing party. Uh, he was uh, involved in the trades unions, particularly for miners. Um, however, in the 80s, he became bitterly disillusioned with the ruling party, as many people did. Um, it's, it's redolent of um, Animal Farm by, by George Orwell that uh, when the revolutionaries in this allegory start imitating the very people whom they overthrew, and it ends as all well right, and I could not tell man from pig and pig from man, and so on. So um, Mugabe and his kleptocratic clique then started to uh, copy the mannerisms and the behavior of Ian Smith's regime, which they had ousted. Um, so Mr. Svangarai thought that the ordinary man did not get a fair crack at the whip, and um, the um, <coughs> oligarchs were really only concerned about lining their own pockets and holding power at almost any cost, turning the country into a banana republic, whereby um, the uh, norms of democracy were all there in the statute book, but in practice were flagrantly violated. So he founded the Movement for Democratic Change, MDC, and um, he courageously campaigned for real democracy through the 90s. He suffered police harassment, being constantly spied on by the CIO, Central Intelligence organization that was uh, Mugabe's um, secret police and the CIA wasn't really about national security it was simply about keeping the Mugabe family in uh, the uh, opulence to which they'd grown accustomed and to ruthlessly squashing dissent so he was arrested he was frequently beaten up beaten up he cooled his heels in jails on, on several occasions um, and then he had a meeting of the I believe it was Ari Ben Menasha in Canada this former Israeli intelligence agent that was filmed and there was this grainy imagery and it was possibly Tsvangarai and supposedly discussing a plot to overthrow and assassinate President Mugabe. Tsvangarai stood trial for treason and he was acquitted. Um, but nevertheless, it had succeeded in severely damaging the MDC and um, <laughs> it um, made, left him almost bankrupt, all the rest, it was a huge distraction. But um, Mugabe had still run the country into the ground He'd turned a uh, prosperous country into a basket case when people were starving, when there was the worst hyperinflation in the world. It was just um, cacocratic. So this uh, execrable government um, did uh, very little to, to stop the spread of AIDS and things like that, and people were living in the most abject penury. So in 2008, it's very likely that uh, Svangarai won the presidential election, and there were there was flagrant... Um, cheating by Mugabe's thugs, and lots of MDC members were murdered. And there was such pressure, such howls of outrage, because the, uh, the cheating was on such a gross scale and so blatant that even Mugabe was forced to succumb and make Tsvangarai his prime minister. And I thought this was a good deal, that maybe this improved things a little bit. There's very little evidence that that, that happened, and I suppose it just effectively neutered the opposition. And I don't think it did much to improve life for the ordinary person. Um, perhaps he made the wrong call. Was he foolish to trust Mugabe? Mugabe was always talking about how he'd um, been the leader all through the struggle against Ian Smith and his cronies. Now, yes, all that's true, but he played that card for all it's worth. Lots of people involved in that and fighting against um, the Rhodesian government, but some of them end up at the end MDC. That doesn't excuse the countless crimes that Mugabe and his henchmen had committed uh, since 1980. Uh, so. What else could Sangarai have done? He was offered the chance to serve, he's there to serve the public. He thought he might be able to better the lot of the ordinary person. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it turned out that way. Did he improve anything? Well, it's questionable. Then he was out of office. 
So um, it's a poignant moment and uh, time to reflect on what might have been. I wish he had become president. He could scarcely have been worse than Mugabe. He was in politics for the right reason. He was morally courageous. He was physically brave. He was um, an outstanding man. And um, I suppose it just goes to show that uh, really honesty is the worst policy, that uh, good and valiant people seldom make it in politics, that um, it is the charlatans and the cheats who very often get to the top um, and that's that. Mugabe is gone, but there's Emerson Nangagwa, who was his number two for a long time. And the outlook does not look rosy. And there's been very little improvement. And <clears throat> many Zimbabweans have been forced to flee owing to malnutrition to neighboring countries.